Morning, Trainiacs. Sarah is finally feeling good enough to have a big day. That means I'm having a big day. One hour swim, hopefully do an hour of video work. I got a kickboard for you. One hour run, two hour and 30 minute bike. Why are you so bright? Let's do it. your workout there? Uh, you know, I wouldn't really call it a workout. Mm -hmm. I'd call it a splash around for an hour. Three and a half K get wet? Four and a half K mm. get wet. Nice try there, Taryn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, it is video time. Audio files are all done, so now it's time to crank videos. And look at this, we got a just a perfect little, what would they call this in Arizona or Mexico? Hacienda? Patio? Looks like they're gonna sit there, and I'm gonna sit here, and we have two cameras. We're official, two cameras. Well, because you save money and you know what's going in your body. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, you if you were to uh, order things from you know, the, the shop next door, you don't know what you're eating. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hey, I'm Ben. And today we're going to talk about injury prevention. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm Sarah, oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. My bad, okay. my bad. Yep, yep, yep. I'm Sarah. Hey, I'm Ben. And today we're talking shoes. Well, I guess the other injury prevention thing is, number one injury prevention is sleep. You want to just say that? Sleep and nutrition? Yeah, I mean, I sleep a lot more. I sleep anywhere between 10 and 12 hours a night. Yeah, so it's... I don't know. No, that, that's good. Though. I don't know. That's... Running in different shoes helps your uh, muscles and your feet. Um, always keeps them guessing. If you're running the same exact shoe constantly, uh, then your feet can become um, normalized to a certain way that the shoe is forcing your foot to go. Um, That's a wrap, folks. All done. So now, if I had to summarize the messages that will be in that running course from Sarah and Ben, it's that it's not about the tech. It's not about having the absolute right shoes. It's not about even the pacing. It's about putting in a consistent amount of work, and that means staying healthy, staying injury-free, not having really big weeks and really down weeks, but just consistently chipping away at some key sessions, a long run, a speed run, a hill run, maybe a brick run, but doing that year after year after year, and when it's time to go hard, you're feeling good enough to go really hard. When it's time to go easy, you go really easy and you don't stay in that middle zone. You know what I've been talking about with like that 80-20 and like lots of zone two, but then when you gotta go hard, you gotta go really hard. Same sort of thing. And the big takeaway with Sarah and Ben, and this was consistent with Lucy and Reese and Cam, is that these pro triathletes, they don't have a secret workout, they don't have anything that like we aren't doing besides focusing on the simpler things. 
Whereas a lot of age group triathletes are focused on, well, I can't run until I have the right shoe or, hey, Taryn, what's your running watch? I need the run right one running watch. Well, Ben, he is sponsored by Garmin and he says, well, you know, if you get me a watch that tells me the time, good. And if it tells me the distance at the end of the run, bonus. Sarah, she made her first Olympics with a basics $30 stopwatch from Walmart. But they put in the work and work to keep themselves healthy, injury-free, and just make sure that they can nail the basics week after week after week. And I think that, that is a super message that us triathletes who are age groupers that tend to fuss about a lot of the little things and nuances don't fuss about enough. Now, I am gonna go and uh, do a bike ride. I gotta, gotta get the sun in while I can because I'm going home tomorrow. Let's go for a bike ride. <laughs> So I get out there and I've been having some DI2 issues this past couple days because traveling over and over and over and, and constantly taking the bars off and then taping them up. Often the connections inside the DI2 end up just going and all of a sudden yesterday I couldn't shift into the big ring thought that I was just going to go out and just deal with the small ring, do like a long endurance ride of three, three and a half hours. Not too terribly hard because I didn't have the big ring. Well, as it turns out then, I could not shift down, shift harder in the small ring. I shifted up a couple of times and then all of a sudden I'm doing like 60 watts for an hour and a half. So I just made a game time decision, like these workouts, they've got to change a lot of the times. And Trainiacs, especially athletes on Team Trainiac, just know that all of the workouts that I give and all of the workouts that I start and tend to do is like in a perfect scenario, here's what we want to accomplish. Today that was a long endurance ride. Well, circumstances just weren't going to allow a long endurance ride. So then I got to think, all right, Given the circumstances, given the amount of time that I have, I can't go back, go to a pool, I can't go for a run because I was pretty smashed up from yesterday's run. So I've got a ride. Well, what can I do that actually has a training effect? And that is a short, easy recovery ride. It still has a training effect because I'm recovering, so I'm then absorbing some of the workouts that I've done over the past week. It's just not as fun. I don't feel as accomplished. But during travel and busy times, it's important to do these recovery days. All right, Trainiacs, I gotta pack this whole thing up because we are leaving tomorrow. Later. <laughs>